That's right. I don't live, I don't live in the modern day church. I live in the book of Acts. I don't live in the modern day church. Modern day church is drinking the Kool-Aid. You with me? If you, if, if you, wherever you go, if people see you, then they're missing it. Wherever you go, supermarket, store, wherever you go, if they see you, then there's something wrong with you. Wherever I go, I don't want them to see me. I want them to see Jesus. Amen? Jesus. I'm the only Bible you're going to see. I'm the only church you're going to see. Amen? I ain't, I'm not about a building. I'm about the kingdom. You with me? I'm about the kingdom. I am blessed to be here. I, I, before you sit down, I got to tell you something crazy. You know, you, you know who's with you. You with me? You know who's with you. When the storm hits. You with me? I preach at many places. And I'm not saying this to Don Gray or say anything bad about people. Because I'm, 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 I'm a crazy Puerto Rican. I tell you in your face. I don't, and then I repent later. You with me? I tell you in your face and I repent later. Same thing. When I was say, a, a pastor was saying real quick, I was in Daystar. Uh, and, and the pastor, you know, he's a little, you know, cutie. Dressed up nice. Looked nice. Smelled nice. You know, a little, a little theology going on, maybe a little PhD, whatever. But, and, and I asked the pastor, and then the lady came, she said, can we take a picture? I said, can I take a picture with this guy? I mean, I'm right here. Take a picture with you? Can I take a picture with you? You hear me, right? But he ignored me. And then in the end, he couldn't hold it anymore. He said, what do you do for Jesus? I said, I cast out devil. This guy went to the bathroom, never came back. I, I mean, I don't know if he had a kidney issue. Or maybe he was holding on to his demons. So if you got any demons, you come tonight. This is what we do here. We'll send them to the dry places. We put the torment, we put the judgments of God upon demons up in here. You with me? We put the fire of God upon demons up in here. And we come to set the captives free. And the last thing I tell you, when the storm hits, you know who's with you. You with me? You don't, and I say this to say this and not to embarrass your pastor. You know, two people from all the places I preach call me and say, you okay? I got your back. Do you need anything? Pastor did that. He called me. I only came here once to this church. Right? I only came here once to this church. It's not like I'm a regular. It's not like I preach here so many times. I preach many times in many places. And the only person that called me, it was two people, one in Kansas City, and pastor called me and he said, I got your back. You okay? Do you need anything? Come on. I'm not even a member. I'm not even a member of this church. You with me? But I'm a member of the kingdom, and he's a member of the kingdom, so he's, he, he's kingdom-minded. He reached out to me. See, if I, if, I, if I had to go to a church in Texas, I would come here. I don't care how I have to drive, because I want to be with people that are real, that are genuine. That, that, that when, when the storm comes, they know how to reach for the phone and say to me, are you okay? That, that I was blown away. I was, you could sit down now. I know, I know. Go ahead. Some of you is a Catholic. <laughs> Catholic people do aerobics. Sit down, get up. Sit down, get up. Sit down, get up. <laughs> Some of the people, I, I want to preach. I want to do this. And you can't sit. You can't even stand for five minutes. I was in California the other day. I was casting out so many devils. It was 108 degrees. The pavement was so hot, my sneakers was melting. For real. My sneakers were melting. You think I was, you, you think, you think, you think that I was, that I, I said, I go, buy me, I go buy me a new pair of sneakers after I'm done with this. But I ain't going to let the devil breathe. Amen. I, listen, I challenge, I challenge Madeline Manson. I told him. I'm in California all the time. I meet you by Krispy Kreme, or I meet you by in and out Burger. We could take it, we could take it either way. I meet you there, I promise you, after I hit you with the Holy Spirit, you'll never tear up a Bible again. Someone, someone gotta stand up for Jesus. Someone gotta stand up for the kingdom. Too many of us are hiding. You're Christian on Sunday, but when it comes to Monday, you're ashamed of the gospel. 
I'm not ashamed of the God. When I get off the plane, I got Cuomo and his mafia people waiting for me right in front of it, right in front. Every time I get off, every time I get off the plane in New York City, I got the mafia, Cuomo's people, his cronies waiting for me right outside the plane saying, where you been, where you doing, the health department police, where you doing, where you been, and all this other crap they tell me, right? So you know what, I, I said, you ain't scaring me. I grew up in the ghetto, first of all. Let's just get it straight. Let me give you my resume. I like Paul. Let me, I grew up in the ghetto. I dug gunshots. I dug, I dug A's. I dug crack. And you and, and, that's, and, and, and you're looking at me up and down like that. that. That's the best you got? I grew up in the projects. I mean, there were no white people in the projects. There were no... <laughs> There were none. We had a little Chinese joint, you know, four chicken wings, puff of rice. That's what we had. And, and you're going to look, I said, you crazy? Oh, if you don't fill out this paperwork, $10,000 fine. I said, give me the paperwork. I fill it out. I write Chinese. I write English. I write Spanish. I write French on it. And then I signed the back, Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump got off the plane. If you can make this crap out, you get a PhD on the spot. And you ain't gonna, you gonna trace me, you crazy? I, 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 I grew up in the ghetto. I still got a ghetto mentality. You ain't tracing me, you trace your mama, but you ain't tracing me. I'm, I gotta do Jesus work. I gotta do Jesus work. I gotta do Jesus work. If they, if they couldn't stop Peter, and they couldn't stop Paul, they couldn't stop the apostle to do Jesus' work, why are they going to stop us? I don't know how the church is. I, I don't get it. I understand we have to regroup. Pastor and I were talking about regrouping. I get the regrouping part, but we got to get the show on the road. I mean, I regrouped for a little while, but I'm coming back stronger. I don't understand. This is the thing. The sissy church. Still closed. Still closed. How is it? I don't get it. How is it? We can hit one plague, and, I, and I, I'm not undermining the, those that got sick. Listen, my heart goes out, and if you hear, I pray for you. I'm not afraid. I lay hands on you. If Jesus lay hands on the leper, I lay hands on you too. You come with your COVID-19 up in here. What we'll cast it out? I'm not afraid, baby. I'm like the Ghostbusters. I'm not afraid of no ghosts. Ain't no weapon form against me is going to prosper. The Bible says so. And if I'm sick, because God allowed for me to be sick, and if I go home with the Lord, big time for me. That's how I live. I live on the wild side. I live on the radical side. So how is it that we get hit with one plague, and we shut the doors? Pharaoh ain't believing Jesus. He got hit with 10 before he bent his knee. Ooh, they took Pharaoh 10 plagues, 10 to bring that devil down. Hey, we get hit one and we like, we put, for, we put a for sell sign on our church. And let me, let me preach, man. Let me preach. Come back at seven o'clock. It's going to get crazy up in here. Bring your enemy at seven o'clock. You tell your enemy you got beef from me, I meet you at the church. That's it, right? The haters, you got beef with me? We're going to square it off in the church. Come to the church. And we cast the devil out of them. Somebody got to do it. This, I mean, I'm, I'm on this, man. This is what I'm on. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I got this from Donald Trump. So if you hate Donald Trump, come on, I cast that devil out of you too. <laughs> cast that devil out of you too, baby. Trust me. I bring the fire. It's not a D or R, godly principles, baby. I'm gonna cast my lots where God told me to cast my lots. And I'm not here to, I'm not here to politics, but this is, my, this is my message. Make the church great again, casting out demons in the name of Jesus. <laughs> That's how you do it. You know what, I, I just gotta say something. I don't understand. I always say everything that, I always say, remember, remember, not everything that is a blessing from, from and not everything that's a blessing from God, Satan has power to give you the kingdoms of this world too. Where is the discernment of the church? Where is the discernment of the church? You see, 
The demons has abilities, but they have no authority. You with me? The demons got ability, but they have no authority. I'm, t I'm taking you somewhere. I'm taking you somewhere. How is it? I was called, I was called October. I call October like the movie, Indecent Proposal. You ever seen that movie? Come on, don't act too Christian on me. <laughs> Indecent Proposal was a person that let, let someone borrow his wife for one night for a million dollars. It was a movie back then, back in the 80s. Some of you are too young for that. I'm gonna keep it PG on you. But, but, see, we laugh and we joke. I'm just gonna keep it real with you. And I'm just gonna keep it real because I'd rather you be mad at me and make heaven. So, 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 so your indecent proposal says this. I am glad that every Christian parent let their children worship the devil at least one time out of the year. Oh, I think we should do the altar call, right? <laughs> so, how is it that one time of the year you cheat on Jesus? One time of the year, you take off your garments and you put on the garments of the devil and you change your identity as a Christian and you put on a costume and you call it chick or tree and you say it's okay there's only one time a year and you sow yourself and then you you took your kids because this is the trick you took your kids and you change your identity because they're no longer in Christ then they got mixture and now, now you indecent propose you because you did it. You said, but it's only one time a year, John. Well, ask, let's, 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 talk to, let, let's talk to Adam and Eve. One situation, they lost the condo. Well, let me talk to Esau. Because well, if I were to bring Esau, he would testify because of one situation, he lost his birthrights. So when your kids, so, so when your kids, you got them little, and you take them to church every Sunday, and you, and then, but then, then you, you put them in bed with the devil, you sacrifice them spiritually. And then when, you, when, when your daughter grows up and she's a hoochie, <laughs> and your kids are meth, you wonder, but, but what happened? Uh, I took them to church on Sunday. But it's, it's the in-between that the devil's after. It's the in-between that the devil's after. The in-between. What did you do in the in-between? Because last time I checked my Bible, I don't know. I, I don't read the Quran. Quran is garbage. I don't, I don't read the Job Witness Bible. I don't. It's my main. You know that this book, right here, this book, this book is the only one in the planet that the author is still alive. <laughs> this is the book that the author is still alive. This book will take gang members, I've seen it, MS-13s and Bloods and Cribs and put them together. This book will take a, a, a person like my friend, David Berkowitz, the son of Sam, and turn them into an evangelist. And you told me this don't work? That's why Christian, I see Christians saying, well, I live, I live Jesus. No, you left the church. You didn't leave Jesus. Because if you would have had Jesus, you would have you stayed. Oh. Be sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be, because your adversary, the devil, is a, a walks about like, roaring, like a roaring lion. Seeking who he can devour. Who is he's after you? Is he's after you? Is he's after you? Is he's after you? Are you a double-minded Christian? Are you? Are you? The Bible speaks about being double-minded. Are you? Are you bipolar Christian? Are you bipolar Christian? Because today I want to talk to you about. How, I want to talk to you about the atmosphere of your mind. 
the atmosphere of your mind. How's the atmosphere? Have you taken your mind for a tune-up and changed the dirty oil out of your mind and put in clean oil? Have you done an assessment of who you are? Are you the same Christian of last year, the same this year? Because you remind Jesus of the fig tree from afar, you look like a Christian. From close, you got no fruit. That's why Jesus cursed the fig tree. Because from, from afar, it had an appearance. And many Christians, from afar, you look like a Monet, you look nice, but from close, you're a mess. I mean, I'm the only Puerto Rican, they're like, all right, right? So, 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 I'm, I, I, how is the atmosphere of your mind? How is it? Has, has, has your mind been renewed? Oh, you like lost wife. Jesus took you out of safety, but you're still stuck. How is it a woman that come out from a place, geographically, she came out from a place of safety, but she looked back because her mind was stuck still in the ashes a Sodom and Gomorrah. I, like, I, I see people, I heard this pastor say one time, I see people, they, they, they're so focused on the real mirror that the mirror in front of you in the car is bigger, the, your windshield is bigger, what God has in front of you that they think that you left behind. But you're still acting like Pharaoh's still chasing you. How, how is it? How is it? It's a, 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 in Romans, it's by I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, I mean your body, as a living sacrifice ex acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. Now, I mean, you got to serve God somehow, right? And it, it, a lot of times we serve God from the outside, but your inner man is anemic. And, and do, not, do, not conform, do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We do, we, we, we do the form of godliness from the outside, but we deny the power that it lives in the inside of us. I hear Christians saying, I, I'm afraid of the devil. Really? Could you be afraid of something that's so limited? How could you be afraid of something so limited? I don't get it. Yeah, I'm afraid of Madeline Manson. Crazy? I eat his lunch. <laughs> Think I'm afraid of covenants and witches and warlocks and Hollywood and stuff like that? I bring you, I bring you on CNN. Fake news. So when I whip you, they become true news. <laughs> you with me? I can't bring you to Fox because they'll they'll say, oh, you know, they, they got they got his back. I can't bring you somewhere where it's dirty, so when I whip you. In the name of Jesus, I open up a can of whipping on you. It's undeniable. I'm telling I'm, you, the greatest conflict, listen, the greatest conflict is in your mind. You talk to yourself, matter of fact, you talk more to yourself than you talk to your wife. You're crazy. You have some good conversations, because I do, and I'm not even married yet. I have some good conversations with myself. I even say amen to myself. That's how good they are. And then I look next to me, no one there. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So, so it, 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 it is. There's people here sitting today. There's more conflict in your mind than in your finances. Torment. 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 See, because the enemy understands that if he can, he can, if the enemy understands if he can incarcerate the atmosphere of your mind, you lose your discernment. You lose your discernment. That's why many people today, many people today, think I'm not here, because I have to be honest, think I'm not here. Many people today are sitting in dead churches. Sitting in dead churches, false teaching, false doctrine, false theology. A false preaching, a false gospel. Because the gospel that's being preached today, the Bible says that it's an inspiring word of God, right? You with me? The inspiring word of God. You with me? The inspiring word of God. But the Bible that is being taught today, it is the it is inspired word of man about God. Because the devil has twisted on them. How is it going to be? How is it the inspiring word of man about God? You crazy? No, it is the inspired word of God. How is it that the devil changed the channel on you? And you haven't even noticed because you have no discernment. 
you have no discernment. Philip, even Paul say, Paul say, in, Phil, in, the, Paul say in the book of Philippians, they preach any other gospel. Let them be cursed. So when you sit somewhere and they're preaching the Kool-Aid message of the hippie Jesus, not the Jesus we know in the Bible, the hippie Jesus, the new age Jesus, peace Jesus. And you're drinking the Kool-Aid because it doesn't bring, listen, it doesn't bring, listen, it's a curse because a curse, a curse doesn't bring conviction. Because the, this is a mirror that will challenge you how far you are from God. Okay? It, 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 it doesn't bring conviction. It doesn't bring transformation. And it doesn't bring spiritual maturity. See, I want to, when I used to walk in, when I used to walk to Times Square Church back in the days when they had David Wilkinson, and Wilkinson used to preach, either you run to the car or you run to the altar. You had two choices. You had two choices. That's the preaching I want, my sister. I want something to hit me so hard that even when, when Wilkinson would preach about homosexuality, I run to the altar just in case. <laughs> just in case I got attracted to Bobby. <laughs> Lay hands on me. Do something, because I don't want to be Ricky Martin. Because I want to keep, you see, people, I want to keep every door closed. Because then, and in my story, I want to make Jesus Christ proud that he didn't pick me, he made a mistake. That's my story. My story is that when I close my eyes, I make my daddy proud. That he didn't make a mistake in 1999 by picking me. He said, Jacob, I love and Esau, I hate. You with me? I don't want that to happen to me. So, so, so my question, my question to you, the Bible said the inspired word of God. And, 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 and the, the biggest thing that the church is struggling with is forgiveness. Uh, the spirit of offense. People say, I, this is the thing I don't understand. People say, I forgive you. I forgive her. I forgive him. But they go like, they, they come up and go, yo, my sister, you know what she did to me? You heard? I forgave them, but let me tell you, watch up. What, what, don't turn your back on them. But I did forgive. Let me give you, let me give you an example in the Bible what total forgiveness is so you can learn something today. Let me give you total. Did forgiveness and you still gossip about the person, but you said you forgive? you in trouble because if you were to die tonight in that condition, you'll go to hell. That's what the devil played you, like a violin. Total forgiveness in the Bible when Joseph got betrayed by his brothers. And then later, he revealed himself to his brothers. You with me? Right? He revealed himself to his brother. And when they brought his father Jacob, he never told Jacob the story. He never told Jacob the story. He never told dad. We need to go do lunch because these crazy brothers of mine, let me give you the story what they did to me a couple of years ago. They, did you see anywhere in the Bible that he had a lunch meeting with Jacob and told them what the brothers did? No. Total forgiveness. Practice, it works. So when people do something to me now, I'm like, Psh. I don't even get in the ring with it because you're trying to slow me up. Because I know that the church is an ICU. And you're in intensive care, Jack. And, and the only thing that's keeping you alive is the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to let you go. And I'm just going to forgive you. It doesn't mean I have to have a cheeseburger with you. I just let you go. And I just keep on moving. Because I'm going somewhere. And where I'm going, you can't come with me. <laughs> with me? You ain't gonna be, you ain't gonna be, you're not gonna be my hindrance, my delay, my blockage, and my distraction. You're not gonna be that. You're not gonna be that because where I'm going, I got a race to finish. I have an assignment to finish. I have a mission to finish. I'm, I'm like a spiritual gangster. They say, I, I, I come to Dallas, I come here to Texas, right? And I say, he, this is my cowboy friend. I'm the ghetto friend he got. I'm the only ghetto friend he got. <laughs> Puerto Rican ghetto friend. That's the only one he got. He got no Puerto Rican. Everybody here is Mexican. Come on. I mess, up, I mess up the Texas every time I come to, to Texas. I go to Houston, I'm the only one Puerto Rican there. Maybe one, two, Juan Martinez. 
I, I, go, I go, go to California, same thing too, I mess it up. So I'm his ghetto friend, and he's my cowboy friend. Because you go to Houston, there's no cowboys over there. It's Mexicans. Same, keeping it real. But you know I love my Mexican people. You know what I mean? We, we, we got a lot in common. We all know, listen, we joke, we laugh, but we're on the same boat. God don't see no black, God don't see no Puerto Rican, God don't see no white. God see the blood of Jesus, that's what he sees, you know what I mean? So you ain't gonna divide me against a brother and a sister. You ain't gonna divide me because it's not about the culture. I don't have a culture, I'm not even Puerto Rican, I'm Jewish. I told that, I told that to, I told that to uh, Uncle Sid, I said, I'm Jewish. He looked at me like. <laughs> I said, yes, I am. I'm Jewish. I got, I got the Jewish Messiah living inside of me. So happy Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> the Yom Kippur. You know, God is doing something. Let me say something. I was talking to Pastor. Let me share. There's a shifting in the spirit. Let me, let me just break something down to you. Give me a second. Don't listen. When God took the, the Satan of altars in D.C., every, 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 every state has a Satan, an altar of Satan. D.C., God sent Jonathan Carr. Jonathan Carr is a bad boy. He sent Jonathan Carr to do the return, right? He represents the Messianic church. And then they sent Frank and Graham to represent the Gentile church on the march. You put the church together like that, that is the complete church. Understand? Because God is not coming back for just Gentiles. I hate to disappoint you. God is coming back for the complete church, Jews and Gentiles together. That's what God. So the shifting in, 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 in D.C., the judgment in 2021 is coming for D.C. When Jonathan Khan picked up that vase and he smashed it, he said, judgment is at your door. And then he blew the chauffeur. And then, and then the marching order with Frank and Graham with the troops. Jews and Gentiles in one place. The book of Acts in one place. And people missed it. Because we get too emotional. Cut your emotion. Stop the, the devil plays on your emotions and your senses. Jesus is not into emotions and senses. Jesus is not into that stuff. Just, just to let you know. Just to let you know. And, 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 and when you allow, when you allow the devil to change the atmosphere of your mind, the word of God becomes boring and tasteless. And you drink the Kool-Aid. You with me? The word of God becomes boring and tasteless. That's why people backslide. That's why people leave the church. Because the word is alive. It's a two-edged sword. It's supposed to sharpen you. The word of God. This is sandpaper, baby. This is sandpaper to polish you and me. This is sandpaper. This is sandpaper. You don't want to be polished? Don't read it. Read the Quran. I'm not afraid of Muslim either. Just to let you know, you get on my plane and you start saying jihad, whatever you say, we'll be seeing how great is our God before we get down because I'm going to open up a can of whipping on you. That's the truth. That's the truth. You be singing, how great is our God. Because I like, <laughs> on the plane, baby. Just to let you know, don't get on Delta. Take United. <laughs> the battlefield of mind, who owns your mind? Who owns the territory? Who owns, who owns, the, who owns, who's renting space in your mind? Who owns real estate in your mind? The four weapons of the enemy, the four weapons of the enemy, when you know he's controlling your mind, he's controlling, he's stressing you to death, he's tormenting you to death. He make you wanna, he, he wants you to quit and he wants you to give up on God. At least someone say yes. Yeah. Some of you are like, I picked the wrong time to come to church today, John. <laughs> I thought you had a happy message. Go to Osteen's church. <laughs> They'll preach to you. Go over there. I mean, that's my little brother, Joey. I put up on him. <laughs> You're going to be marching one Tifa and Black Lives Matter. You trying to be a gangster? People quiet, look at you. 
I don't care. I'll cast that religious devil in a few minutes. You bring it up here, baby. You, you with me? So, 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 it, it, the warfare, listen, the, war, the warfare is not out there. You're missing the point. The devil, the devil, the devil has, the devil has tricked you. We, we focus too much on what's going out there, but the warfare is in here. Because you see, you see, if you, you, if you can't beat the devil here, you can't beat him out there. You with me? The, the, the battlefield is in the mind. The mind, the mind, the mind. That's why you see people that are brilliant. You see pit masters, you see pastors and leaders and evangelists that one time they want fire and they can do it. It's out because the devil knew how to change the channel of their mind. You see people like, as amazing he was, Bishop Carson Pilsen preaching a gospel that is not a gospel, preaching something that no one goes to hell. You see people on TV today preaching, they started on fire, but who changed the channel of your mind? And it's, I'm not judging, I'm telling you because you have to go your mind. That can happen to me, it can happen to you. It can happen to anybody. No one is exempt from the attack of the mind. And we focus too much out there when the devil is renting space in here. Understand? The devil understands because he knows that the fight is not the fight is not out there. The fight is in your mind. The plan of the devil is to distort, the, to distort with me, to weaken, to change, to incarcerate, to enslave you. Which one you on? Are we okay? My focus is not out there. My focus is not on my family. My focus is not on my checkbook, my job, my marriage, or my sickness. He used those things to get you out there. You focus, oh, my wife got a demon. Maybe you got one too. I see, I come to different altars and people bring, oh, here's my boy, cast out the demon. I look at her first. Where did he get, where he get it from? <laughs> so you free and your boy is a demon possessed? Maybe we cast it out of you and then he'll be free. I see people, I, I, I'm going to do a book one day. It's going to call altar calls. I got some crazy altar calls to tell you. Crazy altar calls. I was in Houston, Texas, uh, and this guy came up to me. Good looking young man, he came up to me. He said, John, cast out, cast it out, cast it out. And I'm like, well, first of all, what do you need to cast out? The dude was in tears, crazy. Cast it out, John, cast it out. I'm gonna cast out what? Stay right there, tell me what you need to cast out. Don't come close. <laughs> Don't come close, baby. Cause I got the five four ministry. I drop it right back. You with me? And he was screaming. He said, I got out of a gay bathhouse last night. I slept with all kind of men. Take it out, John. I said, stay right there. You're going to try for nothing over here, baby. I cast it out from 10 feet away, social distance. <laughs> <laughs> we had no COVID-19 at the time. Be careful who you lay hands on. You with me? We almost there. We almost there. Be careful who you lay hands on. You know, in life you have to set an example, right? You with me? And and I, I say this in a lot of love. I, maybe I never I never get invited to one of them big mega churches, twenty, thirty thousand people. I'm cool with that. Because I'm doing Jesus. Understand? I'm doing Jesus. And I, I say to you, um, wherever you go. Whether you're a minister, everybody's a minister, by the way. God didn't call you to, to occupy the seat. God called you to minister. The best ministry in my life has always been a one-on-one. -on -one. When I go to the supermarket, car wash, that I can encounter that person one-on-one. -on -one. That's been my biggest ministry to me. And I share this with you is that every day you get up, let, let your, light, your light shine. Set the example for other ministers. Set the example for other ministers. You with me? Set the example for other people. One time I was on the plane. One time I was on the plane, and I sat down. Or I was sitting down, and this girl was going. She was. She came in late, and she was going to climb over me. And I said, Felix, don't climb over me. I told, her, Let me just get out of my seat, because you know, that's on a, for me it was inappropriate. You know, don't climb over me. I don't want you to rub on me. I don't need to rub on you. Okay, and I said just, and then he said, I said, let me just get out, whatever. And I would just want to set the example, and I, and I say that because you know, I don't, I don't hate ministers. I don't, I don't have hate in my heart. 
I'm just saying is that as, as, as you live for Christ, be an example. Right? I, I don't have a problem with Osteen either. I love Osteen. To be honest, I think Osteen is amazing for young believers. I think he's an amazing person for young believers. He has a lot of stuff to bring to young believers. Encouragement, build them up, then pass them on to someone else that will put depth and growth in the person, right? So, because we got to start somewhere. You with me? But be an example in life. Because the girl came over, she tried to climb over me. I said, no, 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 let, let, me, let, me, let, me, get, let me get off. Let me just move to the side and you can just get, get on your seat. Because I, you know, I didn't want no, inter- no, t- no touching or whatever, accident, whatever. She said, okay, I got out, she got in. The plane took off. I was in Atlanta. I was coming from somewhere else. Stopped in Atlanta. Took off. Two two hours and something flight. So when the flight, I pulled out some earplugs, and I was going to watch a movie. So I watch a movie, whatever. Watch the news, whatever. She said, "Well, where did you get those earplugs?" I said, "Well, I got them from the plane before, because the plane I was on, they were they were not giving out earplugs." And she said, "Oh, okay." I said, "You want them?" She said, no, no, you was going to watch a movie. I said, no, I, I won't, no, you can take them. I t- I'm okay. I, I just close my eyes and just relax. You can have them, I told her. She said, no, no, I, I don't. I said, just take them. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give them to you. I said, no big deal. She took them. She watched the movie. I got off the plane. I went down to get my suitcase. She w- I, I heard someone went like this to me in the back. And I looked back, and she said, I want to thank you for the earplugs, right? She said, I know who you are. She said, I read, I read your books. You're John Ramirez, I just didn't want to bother you. See, it set an example. All the Bible always say, oh, get on top of me, climb over me, grab me, touch me, call me Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> what example I, I would have set for that person? Oh, he, on TV, he's this way, but look at him, he's a freak. He let me climb over him. Set an example. Set an example. I didn't let him climb over me. Just keeping it real. I'm almost finished. Keeping it real. Leave the church. Set an example. Set an example. Let, let me just say, let me just finish with this. Then graph the word of God. Right? It, it, it's, it, people say, John, how, how do you get your mind back? How do you get your fight back? It is the engrafted word of God that saves your mind. The engrafted, that's where the devil is trying to keep you out of your prayer closet. You do all kind of activities, you do all kind of church stuff, but you have no prayer closet. Because prayer closet, it, it is a closet, the prayer closet, it's the closet that Clark Klein used to turn into Superman. You with me? It's the prayer closet, it's the clock, the clock camp moment, you get in, you spin around, and you come out like, yeah, boy, I'm here. The prayer closet, your prayer closet, your prayer, the, 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 the grafted word of God saves your mind. It heals, it heals, but the devil's stealing your prayer closet. The devil understands that the word of God is alive, and if the word of God is alive, we serve a God that is alive. With me? The word of God heals your mind. Heals your mind. The word of God heals your mind. The, you see, the word of God will bring you back. You see, bring you back to that Lazarus moment. The word of God will bring you back to the place that you was rejected. The word of God will bring you back to your childhood, your broken places. The word of God will bring you to the place that you got fear and worry. The word of God will bring you to the place that you depress. The word of God will bring you to the place that you are discouraged. Even David said, my soul is discouraged. The word of God has to bring you back to that place to bring healing, deliverance, breakthrough, restoration, restitution. God is the only one. He's the master architect that he can put the building together and he knows how to fix the broken places. The word of God will bring you to the place that you're being tormented, the place that you had trauma, the place that you want to commit suicide. The word of God will bring you to the places that you've broken. The word of God. Because the word of God brings, the word of God brings new beginnings, new hope, new joy, new peace, new desires. The word of God. That's why many Christians today, they don't have a prayer closet. They don't have. You ask Christians today, did you pray today? Well, I kind of did. How you pray? Jesus, I'm up this morning. <laughs> Jesus, bless my coffee. 
Amen. I pray. What is, if you were to treat your children that way, you were to treat your marriage that way, what kind of marriage and, and family values you have? That's when I was in the, the, the 9-11, the 9-11, when it happened in New York City, I, I, I saw the buildings on fire from my window. And people were saying, it's God's fault. Really? Everybody, everybody blamed Jesus for that day. No one blamed the devil. And no one took responsibility for their own sins. Because we were getting freaky before the 9-11 happened. You know, it's funny that we, 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 we caught up with this good God. This hippie God. Peace, he love. You know, he loved you, he loves me. But what happened with the God that is a consuming fire? What happened with that God that, that he, would judge you on, he would judge you on judgment day? Oh, God is so merciful that he will call up a 911 on you to get you saved. Because when, I, when we check Barnes and Nobles that, that Sunday, all Barnes and Nobles around the world, the Bibles are sold out. A, a God that would bring, if, if God raised up a foreign nation, you with me? And you smack Israel into place. You with me? How much more he raised up a foreign nation and spanked America into place? She passes, missed it, passes lie to the people. Oh, God didn't do that. God let it happen. God brought judgment on Israel. What makes you special? What makes you special? So God going to let you slide? God's going to wink at your sin? Taking the Bible out of school, taking prayer out of school, taking the Ten Commandments, taking it out of courthouses that time we were doing. We were acting crazy, Eddie. And God said, well, let me get you a 911. Let me get, let me get these little skinny jokers, 19 skinny jokers. They weigh 120 pounds. They didn't have no nuclear missiles. They didn't have no, you know, this crazy army. God allowed it to happen to bring judgment upon America. And the only person that preached it on judgment in America was Jonathan Cohen. So I end with this. Let, let, me, let me give you something here. I end with this. I don't care what you're struggling with. I don't care what you're going through. Jesus is the answer. I don't take 12-step programs. That's for the world. I take one pill, Jesus. I take one medication, Jesus. I take one therapy, Jesus. I don't go into this 12 program. I don't wear masks. I had this 85-year-old lady, she cursed my mom out. She called my mom, she called my mom a hooker. She called, I didn't even know my mom. My mom was not even a hooker. She told me off on the streets of New York. I was about to get, get on her, but I said, I said, Lord, have mercy on me right now. She said, I got in the elevator. God said, oh, keep, look, only three, only two people in the elevator. I mean, since when? He had a mask on. He looked like he had an oxygen thing on. I said, let me ask you a question, fool. Ghetto talk, New York. Christian ghetto. From the, from the message Bible. <laughs> I said, how many packs of cigarettes you smoke a day? He said, four. I said, you worry about COVID-19? What about the cancer devil is coming for you? There was a guy, I'm not gonna get into it, homosexual guy. You gotta wear the mask, I'll report you. I said, I'm gonna wear the mask, you're gonna report me? So let me say something to you. Don't you sleep with a man? But you don't worry about AIDS. But you worry about the COVID 19. So you're not worried about AIDS. There's no pill for AIDS. The, the, the only person that can heal you from AIDS is Jesus Christ. The only person that can set you free from AIDS is Jesus Christ. You're not worried, and I'm not mocking, I'm just giving you a reality check. You're, you're not worried about AIDS, but you're worried about COVID-19. And I'm saying you should use wisdom, but don't let fear dominate you. Understand? Don't let fear dominate you. Because, and I end with this, last time I checked, last, last time I checked this book, it says all things pass away and all things become new. 
in Christ Jesus. How awesome is that? That your situation that you think is permanent is just a temporary situation. That God can fix it. God can make all things new. God can give you new hope, new desire. God can give you a new beginning. God can give you everything. All things pass away. And all things become new in him. And him alone. Him alone. Him alone. I've been tested. I've been proven. I've been, I, at this time, I smell like toast. Burnt up. Crisp. But I'm not giving up on him. Because one thing about Jesus, he doesn't give up on you. And my altar call is simple. You come and we pray. And you ask, you talk to God on your own. You don't need no magic pastor to put hands on you and wrap you up like a chicken with oil. <laughs> you might as well go to Kentucky Fried Chicken Church. Popeye. You come up. Be sincere. Lord, I'm struggling. Uh, what Christian got this message? That's why you got to come at 7 o'clock. I got a message at 7 o'clock. Well, come, listen, how is it? I don't, stay, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand Christians. I, I don't understand. You come to church, you punch in the clock. You give God two hours, you put them on a time clock. But you want God to bless you, prosper you. You want God to change you, transform you. You, got one, God, you want God to heal your sickness, your crazy family. You want God to heal your delusional marriage. But you give them two hours. When I was in demon church, when I was in demon church, you didn't dare put the devil on the clock. We go on at 7 in the evening, come at 5 in the morning. So that's why I know you had no spiritual warfare. Because all night I was doing spiritual warfare when you were taking naps and thinking about Twinkies and donuts. You had no depth. You had no substance. Because you put God on the clock for two hours. Two hours. Your two-hour Jesus, your microwave Jesus, you can't get a breakthrough with a microwave Jesus. You can't get restoration, restitution. God's not going to turn around and take the cancer out of your body, the sin that is killing you, when you're doing a two-hour Jesus. How dare you? You put the sea of the universe on your clock when he's out of time. I mean, I mean, how delusional, crazy a Christian are you? I, I, I come to church. I, when I used to go to, when it was closed down, when I used to go to time to go to church, I go at 8 o'clock in the morning. It starts at 10. I'm going to get ready with God. I'm going to let them know how crazy I was that week. I missed it. I wanted to punch some people in the face. I confess everything. See, I'm the only crazy Christian that confess everything. See, young people just hide stuff. Lord, I, I, I had a bad week. People come up to me, they tell me, John, how are you? I, what is this Christian talk? I'm blessed, highly favored. No, you're not. You're crazy. You messed up. You jacked up. You got, you got generational curses. How are you highly favored? Stop listening to the TV crap. Because before the generation of blessings come, you got, you got to deal with the generation of curses. You can't put the horse before the carriage. Or the carriage before the horse. Come on. It's Texas thing, right? Pastor got horses. I got donkeys. <laughs> A lot of donkeys in New York. I'm, I think in the moving to Texas, man, seriously. I was saying, Pastor, well, what's the difference between Dallas and here? I was asking questions. Because I walked in today, I came down to the hotel, and people were eating breakfast. I was like, they were looking at me like, he, he, he on crack or he's hungry? I ain't seen people eat breakfast. I go to every hotel, everywhere I go. Breakfast place is closed. People got fired. And I walked out and I see people eating breakfast and laughing. And I was like, well, this is a Kodak moment. I was about to take my cameras, take pictures. <laughs> we have lost our way. And the church is right behind the world. We don't even, we, we don't, if you hear the messages today, we don't talk about the blood anymore. We don't talk about the crucifixion anymore. We don't talk about the baptism, the fire. We don't talk about speaking in tongues. We don't talk about, we, we, we don't talk about sin anymore. 
Live as you are, come as you are, stay as you are, die as you are. Jesus still loves you. You know, like, you know, I went to hell and I finished with this. And hell is a, the absence of God. When I went, when I left my body in 99, went to hell. When you that's why I don't celebrate Halloween. That's why I don't celebrate the Dia de la Muerte for my Mexican people. El Dia de la Muerte, el, el Santa Muerte. I don't celebrate that stuff. My, if, my, if my mother dies one day, either she ain't having, having a good time with Jesus, she don't want to talk to me anyway. You with me? And if my mother's in hell, and I pray that never happens, she's frying like a frying, she, like french fries. She can't talk to me anyway. El Dia de la Muerte. I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate by him, be, be him Guadalupe. You know? Come on, people. You know, I had a meeting, and I'm going to just say it the way it is. I had a meeting with unplanned people. The movie Unplanned, I had a meeting with them, and they saw one of my videos, they, they, got, they got crazy on me. I'm about to take out the, I'm about to take out the holy water on them. <laughs> Get back. They got crazy on me because they saw a video that I was in a botanica, botanica the witchcraft place, and I was exposing saints. That's my job, to expose the lie and bring you the truth so you could be set free. And there's people sitting here today, I'm just gonna say the way it is, that you stuck on traditions and culture, but not on Jesus. And there's people sitting here today, I'm gonna make an all to call, you, I'm, I'm the mailman, I'm dropping the mail. And if you mad at me, take it up with the mailman in heaven, take it up with the post office in heaven. You sitting here today, that if you were to die today, you go to hell, because you are lukewarm. God take Christians that are lukewarm and he spits them back out. Not my talk. Is read the book of Revelation. So come. And I pray for you. If you lukewarm, come on this side. If you don't know Jesus, come on this side. Let's square it off. Let's square the situation off. If, if you're having situations in your life, supernatural, demonic things happen in your life, things that have stronghold bondages on you, you can't get away. You're like the hamster on the wheel. You, you, you're free for six months. And you're back in the same thing. I'm not, it's not a judging thing. It's a freedom thing. I don't want the devil to own nothing. I don't want the devil. I'd rather die tonight before I go back to the devil. I'd rather die tonight before I go back to the things of darkness. I'd rather die tonight before I live an indecent proposal. No. Am I perfect? No. Am I genuine for the Lord Jesus Christ? Check it, baby. Because I am. Would I trade Jesus? No. My name is John Ramirez, not Judas. And Judas was a person that walked with Jesus, but the situation with Judas and the situation many believers that today you stuck in your wilderness, it is a simple fact that Jesus did miracle after miracle after miracle, but the devil tricked you because they never registered here. Because when something registered here and here, you don't sell Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And the devil's plan is for you and I that God will do miracles after miracles after miracle, 10 plague, feed the 5,000. He do miracles after miracles and you never grow from glory to glory because you stuck in a place that you never received and you never let the miracle that God did in your life register. So when the next trial, tribulation, situation come, you question God and instead of saying, go to your registry, you say, Psh, he did it for me, he would do it again. Come, I pray for you.